appreciated. But I wanted to have you on tonight, Bassam, because you've traveled the world. Uh, you ha have had a lot of success with your academy. Uh, players now going to Nice in France. Uh, players being represented from your academy on the Team Canada rosters, on and on. And you have a good grasp now, after so many years in Ontario and in Canada, in what we lack and what we need. And I want to get your thoughts on culture. You have been all over the world. So let's focus in on this word culture, Bassam. How do we build this culture within the club, the academy structure, first and foremost, in your mind? Well, the world culture, if you were just going to look at Europe, for an example, that's been embedded for years and years. We're a new country we cannot really say that how can we get a European culture in Canada. Because number one, Canada is multi-nations within the nation. I think we need to build something that unique for us as Canadians. And I think that's where we, in my opinion, we're lacking behind. Because, I mean, in Italy, they have the Italian culture of culture. In France, they have the French culture of football. And it's been going on for hundreds of years in England, Scotland, and so on. In Canada, it's a young country. And, you know, we've called this game a participation game for 50 years now, at least, as far as I remember. And then now today we want to compete where everybody wants to compete. Everybody wants to play on a higher level. And then we say, well, why don't we have a culture? Participating in sports does not create a true footballing culture in any sport to that matter. Um, it's it's. The sport has to be in the country, has to be part of the essence of the country, has to be part of the essence of the, the federation in terms of education, in terms of professional league, in terms of professionalism in general. And then eventually a culture will, uh, will be born. Um, and, and Canada, being a unique country with all the multi-ethnicity, um, it's, even, it's even more complex than, than the rest of the world. Having said that, Having said that, we can, as Canadians, if we can take an equation from the rest of the world and maybe put a little bit of a maple syrup, because, I mean, developing a culture and a developing a player, it's not a secret anymore. It exists on every internet, all the clubs, all the secrets, if you want to call it, of football that we didn't know about before, where we're now very clear anywhere you go on the internet you find out what this club is doing and how this country is developing player right i agree basem but let's be honest let's now focus in on the player here in canada the culture the mentality of the player is not like the one in south america in europe in the middle east for that matter where the players in those countries that i mentioned get up first thing in the morning they train for an hour or two before school and then after school they train again they watch tapes of, of, of their opponents coming up here in Canada specifically, and I would even say in the U.S. of A., you're lucky if you get training maybe three, four times a week, and they say that's already too much. So how do we get this culture in the player, in Canada specifically, where they have that culture of hockey, transferred over to the soccer mind? Well, it's very simple. There's one item that's missing in our country that will never, if we do not have this, we will never be able to fix the game itself in any way, shape, and form possible. It's called profess professionalism. Um, anywhere in the developing country, anywhere, or underdeveloped country to that matter that has a footballing culture, they have something called a professional league. Whether if it is a very high level, La Liga, you know, Premiership, Serie A, um, and, or to the lowest level possible, even in India. They have a professional league that there's some Canadian players on the lowest level playing in some very low leagues throughout the world, but we don't even hear about them. So there are professional cultures everywhere that honestly contribute to the game and, and from, from every angle. We do not have that. What we have, we have a, a, a culture of participation. We have a culture of love for the game. Uh, of love for a European club, because we don't have a club in Canada or a local club that we belong to. We don't have an AC Milan and Inter Milan that compete across the street from each other. So we don't have that. So what we have, we have a youth culture uh, based on two, three times a week at best. 
and we want to produce players out of it. it it's funny you said that, Bassam. It's funny you mentioned that, that there's uh, a lot of people here still today that follow a lot of the clubs back home in Europe and South America and cheer for them on and on. And when it's World Cup time or Euro time, watch out. All these flags come out. I have been ridiculed. I have been laughed at for the last 45, 46 years of my life because I've always said this. And in my house with my two sons, if Italy ever were to play Canada in a World Cup a game, it would be the dream of all dreams for me. I would have Canadian jerseys on. But if you talk to people of Portuguese background, Italian background, a Spanish, German, and it was Canada uh, versus Portugal, Germany, or Spain, forget it. They'd be wearing Portuguese jerseys, Spanish jerseys. That's where the culture for me needs to begin is when Canada's playing Honduras and Vancouver coming up, that needs to be all red in Vancouver, Bassam. Well, part of, part of building a culture is having a professional league, let's face it. If you look at everywhere in the world, if if you really think about it, if we lose tomorrow the, the high leagues throughout Europe, do you think that people will, will be obsessed by the game the way they are today for many, many years? No. Everybody wants to watch the Champions League. In the Champions League, there's people, there's clubs that come from 52 different countries to compete in it. Everybody wants to be in the Champions League. If we do not have a professional culture, in the United States today, they solved it somehow. They created the MLS. Even though we have three MLS franchises in Canada, with all my respect to them, they are not Canadian entities. They are just named in after Canadian cities, but they are professional franchises from the U.S. in, in an American league. Yes, we do have a lot of support for them, but they don't represent the true essence of Canada. So uh, in terms of producing players, in terms of um, showcasing players, in terms of developing players, and three clubs are not enough. We need 30 and 40 clubs in that level in a country like Canada in order for us to elevate the level of youth and then obviously the senior. Senior soccer in Canada is not taken seriously, hasn't been taken seriously since the beginning of the game. And today, if you look at it, um, majority of kids, by the time they're 16, 17, uh, they're just a participant again in the game. They go into it a little bit on the competitive level before that age, you know, between 7 to 17. And then once they hit university level or, a, or the age of going to university, uh, there's no dream. The dream is done. There's no option. There's no jobs in the game. The reality is in Europe, everybody's dying to get a contract to play. People don't play just for fun at Manchester United and Liverpool and AC Milan and, and La Liga and, you know, and Barcelona and, and Real Madrid. They play because there's big contracts and, 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 and players even in second division and third division, they play because they have contracts. And it's a job and they do it every day. And the game in those countries is still better. I mean, you look at Poland and the, and the Euro, not a big name in, in terms of, uh, uh, but they play beautiful football, but they have, they have a professional league. Uh, Iceland, uh, 22,000 registered players in the whole country, male and female. Uh, they're winning their group in the Euro. 22,000 registered players. That means one-third of the number of players in York region where we live. So, I mean, and we ask, why can we not do that? I am sure we can, but we do not have, A, the infrastructure, professional environment, professional club, um, proper funding in the game whether if it's from corporate Canada, whether it's from the media, whether it's from the government, and from Soccer Canada. You're 100% bang on, Bassam, and I'm glad you said everything you said because there's not one point that I could disagree with. You're 100% correct. It's time we have our own professional league, coast to coast. It's time we have uh, you know, a, a place for our Canadian players to play in, our Canadian coaches to coach in, on and on. It's time. It's long overdue, as you said. But Sam, how do we build this culture in the young coach here in Canada that also has a dream uh, to coach, whether as a technical director at a club, at an academy, maybe semi-pro, maybe pro. How do we build that culture within that young coach? Do you tell that young coach if they want to grow as a coach to go out to as many semi seminars, clinics as they can all over the world? Do you tell them to watch games? What is your uh, secret ingredient? Well, the, the number one, I think our coaches are confused because for an example, I'll, give you, I'll take my example. I, I, hold, I hold an A license from Canada, an A license from UEFA, 
and an A license from some, uh, South America. But I really don't use any of my licenses if I'm working with the youth system. So number one, I think we need, in the, for, for educational reason, I think we need to identify what type of, we need to have an education in our country that is first um, based on what we need. If we are into more the youth system, and that's what we have in Canada, most of the game is based on youth participation for now, then we need licensing that will hopefully attract people into that area of education so they can contribute back into the game. You don't, have, you don't need an A license to work with an 8 and 9 and 10 and, and 12 years old. You need a youth professional license based on an ongoing education to deal with children's psychology, to deal with how you treat the young player, what's the, what's the step-by-step or, or on a monthly basis, on, on a, on a three-month basis, what do we do to develop player? How many hours they need to play? How many touches they need to have on the ball? Um, you know, all I, everywhere I go today, you hear everybody say practice makes perfect. Whereby, no, not, not I don't agree with that because practice does not make perfect. Perfect because if we're practicing wrong, then we're becoming perfectly wrong. So, and I think in our country, we're creating a culture of. Of, of mediocrity in terms because our coaches, no disrespect, majority of them don't have the tools to teach young people the right tools in the game. We do not have kids playing on the street. We do not have kids uh, in, 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 in everywhere else uh, touching the ball 24-7. More so when the teacher of the game need to be very, very good. And unfortunately, no disrespect to anyone, the teacher of the game in Canada for the, for the time being isn't very good and uh what we what we get is out of what we have it's very simple so the outcome of what we see in terms of when we compete um is the product of the level of coaching and the level of the game i mean uh, if you if you let's let's base it on this when we watch the champions league we see champions league level of play champions league level of coach champions league of level of referee stadium, fans, you name it. And unfortunately, if you watch our culture, then we are 105th, 106th in the world. So that's where we're going to get out of it for now. You're 100% right. I couldn't agree again. I mean, well points that you made, uh, Bassam. Just before we let you go, let's talk a little bit about some of the special players you have in your academy there. I'm thinking of one young man, Reed, who's off to France, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe he's already there. Talk a little bit about him quickly before we let you go and mention some of the other players that are on trial as well. Sure. We have uh, Adonijah Reed, uh, 1999. Um, he's in, uh, presently he's in Nice. He's been in Nice since October 3rd. He, uh, he is uh, actually presently he's with the Canadian U18 squad in LA. He will be back to Nice in the next few days. He's there for three and a half week, uh, three and a half months. I'm sorry. He's supposed that's his third time, uh, third year in a row that he goes to the club. Um, we are in the final stage and hopefully, uh, keeping this young man there on eventually a professional contract. Um, for now, that's his situation, and we wish him all the best. Um, he's been with us for over close to six years, so we are very proud to say that we helped this guy somehow, this young man, uh, in, his, in his soccer. Uh, we had another young man, his name is Dan Monolac, who was at Le Havre in France for two years. Unfortunately, things are not, didn't work out for him, but we have not given up as well. Dan was with us for four and a half years. He was in the, in, the, in the pool of the 99 of Canada. Um, and, um, you know, he's going through a little bit of, a, of I guess, a, a disappointing period. And we are working with him on, on hopefully uh, reviving all the, the good tools that he has. Um, we have as well a young defender. His name is Malik um, Smith, who's a part of the U18 uh, and the U20 pool. And he is in LA as we speak. He's a strong defender. Um, and the, we have several young players in my mind that um, eventually they will be looked at um, on, on the European level. Uh, it's just a matter of time that we expose them at the right age. Um, we're very proud of our work, but it's not good enough. We don't have all the solutions. I think there is element in, in Ontario and in Canada that working hard on uh, helping. We're not the only one. I think I would say there was many elements or many different, whether if it's a club or a, an academy or a soccer organization, there's a very few that working hard to 
um, improve the level of players in general, and we have some very few good teachers. And I, I, I congratulate all of them on that work, but it's not even close, and it's not enough. And but that's what we have for now.